Lesson 7, the second Niyama is called Santosha. Santo, somebody is hungry. <laughs> Santosha is uh, the practice of contentment, which sounds very similar to non desire, but is a little bit different. Practice of contentment is a matter of positive thinking. Be satisfied with what you have as opposed to being dissatisfied with what you are lacking. Count your blessings is an English expression that comes to mind immediately when talking about contentment. Count your blessings. My mom, because she she lived through the years before the Second World War, which was an uh, uh, economic uh, disaster, before the war, during the war, and many years after the war, um, people lived in poverty. My mom grew up in poverty. And my mom always kept saying that during that time of need, during that time of poverty, people were much happier than they were now in the time of abundance. People were much friendlier to each other, much more willing to help each other with the little that they had, as opposed to people being much more materialistic and selfish um, in this time of abundance. Of course, when you have nothing, it's much easier to practice contentment because, you know, it's just not there and you know that it's not there. While if you live in a world of abundance and you see everybody around you with things that you don't have, it's very easy to become envious. And then it is important that you consciously step in and say, hey, but look, <laughs> there is so much that I have that other people are lacking. You always have to um, um, turn the tables. Just think positive. It is human. We need these yamas and niyamas because they are dealing with human behavior that occur subconsciously, instinctively, but always lead to conflict, lead to disharmony. And the reason why we need harmony is, of course, that harmony is the foundation for growth and development. Uh, that's why sattva is so important. It's not a luxury. Spirituality is not a luxury. Sattva, harmony, is not a luxury. It leads to incredible developments in the human being. And very importantly, the opening up of the crown chakra, where there are latent characteristics that otherwise barely manifest. So always remember this. Yoga is not a new age fashion thing. It is a, it's a necessity for humankind. If more people would practice yoga, there would be less conflict, there would be no war. <clears throat> Contentment can also be tricky. And that always reminds me of my grandfather from my mother's side, who, um, who died at the age of 73 with no diseases, with nothing, there was nothing wrong with him. He was just done with life. He had nothing to complain about, basically. He had raised five children who were doing great. He had many grandchildren. But my mom used to go every Wednesday, she, she used to go to his house to clean up a little bit. And one day on a Wednesday morning, he said, uh, uh, Trus, my, my mom's name is Tru Trus, I'm going to blow the cross march. That is literally translated from Dutch. He was going to blow the cross march, which means I'm going to die. And lo and behold, that night he just passed away in his sleep. No diseases, no heart problems. He just, <laughs> he was just 
too content. <laughs> if you have no passion, if you have no ambition, life is over. Especially when you're old, you, you will be done soon. You can see as an opposite of my grandfather's attitude, there is, um, uh, I always forget his name, <laughs> this uh, English uh, uh, documentary maker, Thomas, help me out. <laughs> The British documentary maker who is now in his 90s, Sir David Attenborough. David Attenborough, thank you. David Attenborough is in his 90s. You see him on TV, you wouldn't believe it. He's so passionate, he's so engaged, he's so enthusiastic. And that's what keeps him healthy and it what, it's what keeps him going. The moment that you have nothing to be uh, passionate about anymore, nothing to be uh, engaged about anymore, enthusiastic about anymore, because engagement, enthusiasm is a vital energy. It is the energy that keeps you expanding, growing, manifesting. My grandfather already, when uh, younger, um, he was too content. I say that with a smile, but actually his whole family suffered because of it. It was already a very difficult time because of the crisis, uh, the poverty. But my grandfather was not uh, inclined to do effort to take care of his family. Uh, he was not a bad man, but he, he had a very simple uh, profession. He, he repaired uh, shoes and he did that at home. And um, of course that doesn't make much money. And um, he also didn't, uh, he didn't feel any motivation to, to, to do a little more effort to take care of his family. So, and not only that, because he was repairing shoes at home, which means that you hammer the soles and, and what have you, they had to move regularly because neighbors complained about the noise that he was making. And just, he just, they just moved instead of him trying to find another occupation or even a better occupation. They just moved. My mom told stories about, you know, that they would get food stamps um, um, during and after the war, they would get food stamps and they would get a liter of milk and they would, they would mix it with a liter of water. So they would have two liters of milk. And when they got eggs, they, grandfather would, would Dad would get a, a whole egg while the rest of the family had to eat quarters of eggs because they would divide an egg in four uh, quarters and, and each would then have a quarter of an egg. Um, what, I'm, what I'm telling here is that contentment often can be confused with laziness. And there, there are a whole... Um, um, you, you see this tendency in the Middle East where people all day, they will tell you, if God wants it, then it will happen, inshallah. If God wants it, it will happen. But also in Buddhism, you see this tendency to, um, to stay on your butt, saying that, uh, well, you know, God will take care of everything. So why would, I, why would I make myself busy? Why would I even bother? If God wants it, it will happen. That's an excuse, subconsciously again, of course, that's an excuse for laziness. People say, yeah, you know, I learned about contentment. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm being content. But if you have a family, you have a responsibility. And contentment, confusing contentment for laziness, that just uh, does so much injustice to those people that depend on you. Your wife, of course, uh, in the past uh, women stayed at home while the husband was at work. So the wife uh, depends on what the husband brings home. And, um, and of course the children who are not uh, able or capable of being economically active.
I told you the story a little bit about the, the, my, um, my passion for cars. Um, many boys like their toys, especially uh, cars. I grew up playing with cars, of course, like many boys do. And um, I apply the same principle there. I, you noticed last week how I approached it. And um, I actually sat in one of those cars and I just thought, you know, it may have a, a beast of an engine, which I would like to have in my car. But then again, if it's just the engine, as opposed to all the, the other things, I, I counted myself rich with my Kia because it's really a wonderful car. And it's one of the first cars that was designed by Schleyer, who came from, uh, who came from Audi, actually, it was the top designer from Audi, came to Korea to work for Audi, for Kia, later for Hyundai also. Um, and led to this huge turnover of these Korean brands becoming premium brands, in fact. Important is also, and this is a little bit more serious, um, to be content with who we are and where we come from. A big burden on many people, and in my case also uh, when I was younger, um, a big burden was, was the past, experiences from the past. Growing up in relative uh, I come from a big family, seven kids. You know, my mom comes from a poor background, so I grew up in relative poverty too. Relative, because life had gotten a lot better, of course, over the years. But a family with seven children doesn't have much money to spend on each of the children. So it's really about having your meals three times a day. And that's about it. So, um, having uh, uh, siblings also with, uh, with uh, addiction issues and in, in the end uh, uh, dying from these uh, uh, issues. Uh, the past catches up with you very often and because we're only human we have a tendency to identify with that sentiment, with that emotion which is very self-destructive. If you have experienced that yourself you know that um, it's very distracting, to say the least, but it's very destructive. We have a tendency to compare, just like with how we compare what we have and what we have achieved, compare that with other people's possessions and achievements, we have a tendency also, especially when we're young, to compare ourselves with other people and how good they have it and how bad we have it. And when you grow up, that can subconsciously really uh, keep bothering you. And not only that, it really holds you back from developing. It really holds you back from, from reaching your potential, from manifesting your, your, your deepest potentials. So there you practice contentment too. Because in the end, if you look at it, um, in the end, experiences in life, on the surface, they may look uh, painful or we think that it is not fair that we have been given such a life, but further down the road you actually see that experiences actually lead to growth, lead to maturity lead to the manifestation of potential that otherwise would not have been triggered because of the challenges that potential comes out. But that happens especially from the day that you start practicing contentment. Because as long as you stay stuck in the emotions, you literally stay stuck. You do not evolve, you do not grow. It's more or less like you get stuck in the sense of self-pity. 
lamenting the, the cards that the universe have dealt to you. This is a very negative and fatalistic approach to life, but again, it's very human. Human beings have a tendency to approach experiences in life like that. Practicing contentment allows you to make lemonade out of the lemonade, out of the lemons that life gives you. It is strengthening you rather than uh, disadvantaging you. Painful experiences, obstacles, challenges in life, they are there to shape you and to prepare you for doing things that otherwise would not have been possible. Meditation is of course one of your greatest tools in all of this because we have a tendency to function subconsciously, instinctively, the moment that you close your eyes in silence and just uh, uh, observe, you will become conscious of the subconscious flows of thought, especially related to these kind of issues. So it's kind of like taking a step back from yourself and looking at your processes as a third person. And that is where you start to connect the dots. That is where you start to see the positive sides of the things that you are dealing with, that you are going through. And that is how you turn lemons into lemonade. That is how you empower yourself by learning and growing from the experiences that you went through. The Buddha, there's a story, there's an anecdote about the Buddha Uh, Gautama the Buddha was born as a prince. He was born in the royal family. And when he was a teenager, he was, uh, he was about to get married. But Gautama the Buddha um, was naturally inclined towards spirituality. And growing up, in the luxury and comfort of the palace, he um, he felt he felt blocked in his spiritual development. He had this uh, leaning, he had this pull towards the spiritual world, but felt that the comfort and uh, and um, uh, and the, the luxury of uh, royal life, life in the royal palace was holding him back. So the night before he was to get married, the story goes, he fled the palace through an underground um, uh, passageway, tossed off all his clothes and joined a sect that is called the Fakirs, living in the woods with nothing more than a loincloth and drinking only water and eating only uh, grass and roots. Very, very super austere. This is actually a story that belongs to the discussion of austerity, but it applies here too, because it tells us how Buddha found enlightenment. Because the story among spiritual people is that austerity leads to energy rising up connection with God, as they would call it, but it is the, the, the crown chakra being activated as a result of that increasing strength and vitality that results from um, uh, minimalistic living. But then after uh, six years or so living with the Fakirs, he, he became increasingly sick. He started having uh, uh, heart rhythm problems, 
other organs started to, to, to fail, uh, headaches and what have you. So he had a feeling, he started having a feeling if I stay on this path, I'm also not reaching my spiritual goals. I'm, I will actually, I will, in fact, I will die if I continue like this. So he then left this, the, the Fakir sect. And the story goes that while he came out of the woods, he came across a goat and he drank the milk of the goat and started nurturing himself back to health. And out of these experiences, living in the luxury of a royal palace to going to the total opposite, living in the forest on almost nothing, he came to the conclusion that neither of those is good. And he came with what is called the golden mean of the Buddha, the middle way. The balance between left and right, plus and minus. There's an anecdote very interesting that shows uh, that in the end, moderation is the answer. The middle way is the answer. We'll come back to that a little bit when we talk about austerity also. Questions about contentment? Santosha? Remember, whenever you are confronted with, with adversity, Whenever you are confronted with uh, uh, failure, remember this subject, contentment. When things go off the rails, when conflict occurs, try to see that everything in life has a reason and a purpose. And when things do not go the way we expect them to go, when um, failure occurs or conflict, remember that that is only designed to make us grow further. Remember that that is a, a moment in time that doesn't last also. It can happen that big things happen, that you lose your job, maybe even a relationship, and you become desperate. Oh my God, my whole life is falling apart. What is happening now? When that happens, you must remind yourself that today is just a moment in time. But one year from now, things will not be the same as they are today. Things will evolve. Things never stand still. Practice of contentment here means accepting things as they are. And that is possible when you realize that everything is designed by the higher powers, by the universe, is designed to teach us wise lessons in life, is designed to bring out the best in us. And it comes with pain. Because as the Buddha found out, living in luxury and comfort, having no wants or needs, is, is killing. Is killing human beings spiritually. While challenges and overcoming obstacles leads to growth leads to manifestation of, of characteristics, qualities we never even expected possessing. So especially when it gets difficult, you must sit down, go into a conversation with yourself. Stay positive. Try to find what's behind all that. Try to find the design behind all that. And you will see, once you start seeing this, you can apply this to all experiences that you had 
since you were born. Positive thinking. I once heard a foreign monk, a foreign Buddhist monk in Korea once said, it's just what it is. Like a glass of water is just a glass of water. What he meant is that things that happen in life that normally uh, we feel hurt us or we feel is unfair, they're just occurrences that if we can strip it of the emotion, it's just like a glass of water is just a glass of water. The reason that we get hurt or drown ourselves in emotion is because of ego. It is ego that makes us identify with the event, with the emotion. And that is where we go wrong. That is where we drown ourselves, where we hurt ourselves. Again, it's human behavior. And that's why it's so important to talk about it so that it becomes conscious. We will talk about the issue of ego a lot more further down the road because ego is a word that is very often used in society but it's barely uh, understood okay if there are no questions let's have a short break <laughs>